All right, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the third attempt. Third attempt as I attempt to talk to the camera instead of the microphone. And hopefully, I started this way early this morning, didn't like the results. So hopefully, I can get it done faster this time. All right, this is for the people that I help podcast with, and hopefully it'll help your podcast. It's a different way of going through it. Most people know how to do this already, but this is in case I'm out on the road or in case I'm asleep and something goes wrong with somebody's podcast. This is kind of a reminder and it's to help them set up either live or pre-recorded podcasts. The idea behind this is to give you a podcast that sounds good. You don't need anything truly extra except for software and a halfway decent computer. So, I really screwed up a bunch of stuff this morning. So, we're going to, I'm going to try and not screw it up right now and try and get past through this faster. All right, let's talk about microphones first. Dynamic and uh, condenser. I use condensers, condenser microphone, a real, true condenser shotgun microphone, my road here. Um, condensers pick up a larger area. They can be hypercardioid, supercardioid, cardioid, stereo, doesn't matter. They pick up a larger area. Okay, I'm in a booth. A broadcast microphone, which is a dynamic microphone, it could be a ribbon, but it's usually a dynamic, picks up a very narrow voice pattern. It has a narrow pickup range. Now, dynamics, you will have to add more gain, okay? Because they usually are very quiet microphones. So you're going to have to add gain. And I'm going to run you through this with dynamics and with condensers and everything else. But first, let's get the initial podcast issue set up. Before we start that... This is mainly dealing with Windows. This isn't going to be dealing with Mac at all. It's just Windows. 7, 8, and 10. Okay, I'm running a 10 64-bit. There is 7, 8, and 10 have 64-bit and 32-bit. Windows, Microsoft is getting rid of the 32-bit as, or at least they are trying to. So we're going to be running all 64-bit. 64-bit can handle 32-bit applications and VST plugins. But 32 bit cannot handle 64. Okay, 64 is reversible to 32, but 32 is not upgradable to 64. As long as we understand that. I'm running a 64 bit. I'm going to show you this. I go to my PC. I am running. Uh, it's my OneDrive. I don't want that. Yeah, go away. I, I'm running music in the background. You can't hear it. I can. I don't hold the copyrights to any of it, so I get to listen to it. You get to suffer through me. I have three drives. Basically, two and a half terabytes worth, no, almost three terabytes. Two, three, about three and a half terabytes worth of space. This is a solid state drive. My C drive, which is where I keep all my important information. And these two, are, this is a hybrid drive, which is part solid state, part mechanical. And this is a totally mechanical drive. No, this is the mechanical drive. This is the hybrid. Okay. Whatever. All of my recording programs, all of my audio software, my programs are all on my solid state drive for quick access. <laughs> This mechanical drive is backup. So Kat sends me her audio files for processing, all her audio files that I have processed, right there. Uh, mine for audiobooks, right there. I also got them backed up in other places. I have removable hard drives, but not what I'm here for. If I go into the system drive itself, I have two files, program files, which is my 64-bit 
and program files x86, which are my 32-bit, okay? So just so we understand, so we're on the same, on the same level, 64-bit program files, 32-bit x86, okay? In a 32-bit system, you only have program files. You don't have the program files in the program files x86. You only have a folder called program files, okay? 32-bit only. 64-bit, like I said, it can downgrade to 32-bit. 32-bit cannot upgrade to 64-bit program uses or VSTs, okay? Eventually, it, all the 32-bit will go away eventually, and then we'll start working on 128-bit programs and operating systems. So, okay, that's the basic. So the first program we're going to start off with is go to VB Audio. Just type it into your search bar. I'm using Google. Voice Meter Banana, okay? It's been around five to seven years. Donationware comes in two flavors, only for Windows, comes in two flavors. You got a zip package or you got an executable file, executable file, okay? I always get the zip package. To me, it's just easier. I just unzip the stuff. When I'm done installing it, I can keep the zip file. I can get rid of the ex executable. Your choice. Honestly, it's your choice, however you want to do it. Program, compressed file, program file, okay? I just always get the zip files. Once you get this, you can install it. Let it install itself, okay? So I'll show you how that works just in case, because I know there are some that don't know. So if you know, I'm not trying to be a pompous ass here. I'm just trying to cover all the bases. Mine's always in my download folder, and I always make a shortcut on my desktop. Right-click, extract all. I extract it right into my downloads file. This is the extracted folder. This is the application, the ex executable file. Okay? Run it. As administrator. Run this as administrator. Right-click on it. Run as administrator. Okay? Don't hit open. Run as administrator. Excuse me. I'm not editing, editing, I'm not going to be editing these videos. So now I'm about ready to lose my music because I'm going to show you this. First, Windows 7 and 8 are a little different than Windows 10. Windows 10 to get into the audio setting, go to your settings, which is this little flower looking thing. Go into system and then go into sound. Okay, these are your defaults to your system. Whatever your system is, these are the defaults to it. Okay, so you have my default is my Studio 68. Okay, my PreSonus Studio 68. My main default is Main 12 Studio 68. That's for my out, which I'm hearing through my headphones or my monitors, whichever I choose. It's headphones because I don't want a feedback loop. My input is mic 12 Studio 68. Mic instrument line in. Instrument being a guitar. I can unplug my microphone. I can pl plug in a quarter inch TSR right into the mic input and plug in an electric guitar and have it come through the interface. All right. Whatever your defaults are, remember them. Write them down someplace. If your system is not totally dedicated to your podcast, you will be changing these systems back. You'll be changing these settings back. Systems. You'll be changing these settings back to their default. If you have a family, and it's a family computer, except for when you're podcasting, you will be changing these settings back. If your system is not totally dedicated to your podcast, you will be changing these settings back because you'll want to listen to music. You'll want to do something. I'm not going to change them right now because you won't be able to hear me if I do. 
when you install banana and I'll show you it won't change any of this these default settings will stay that way okay until you change them so banana is not going to change anything on your system it's just going to put itself in there and be ready to change or change with your system as you change it okay once when you install banana you will have to restart your system that way the rest of the files can be installed the rest of the files that are associated with banana can be installed all right once banana is installed mine's already installed your output becomes voice meter VAIO voice meter input VAIO little counterintuitive right output becomes the input but you don't see an output here unless it's the main out the rest are only are all inputs do not use the voice meter aux input I'll explain why so just hang tight only use the voice meter input the VAIO the voice meter input VAIO not the aux and that and then you come down here and it becomes the output instead of for the input but it's still the same the voice meter output VAIO okay not the aux the VAIO all right that's what those will be changed to when you get done with your podcast when you get done with whatever you'll change those back to their default especially if it's not a dedicated system to a podcast all right so there's that because if you want to, and I'll explain this why I'll explain why here in a second <clears throat> If you don't change them back to their standard and you want to listen to an mp3 if you want to listen to music if you want to listen to YouTube you would have to have banana running voice meter banana running in order to hear it with and if you're if you're okay with that that's fine if you have voice meter VI input and output VAIO as the defaults in order to hear anything else on your system you will have to have banana running okay and banana does not run all the time so that's why I say remember your defaults okay remember your defaults now I'm about ready to kill Kansas so I can show you a banana all right these are your installed programs in Windows 10 I'm just going to scan down scroll down to V which is VB audio when you install from the banana package it installs all this voice meter banana voice meter which you're not going to use virtual IO control panel virtual aux IO control control panel V band 2 MIDI so if you had a MIDI instrument your readme file macros if you wanted to set up macros 15 band graphic equalizer and 8x8 eight eight output matrix these are all great if you're mixing music and whatnot but we're not going to be doing that everything here we're not going to need except for banana we're not going to be concerned with the IO control panel now before I go any further with banana I know this sounds silly but so you have a couple different things and again focus right because it's always the one that comes up all right so let's go to images this is an audio interface it's an interface just like my presonus and I'll show you the presonus here and it's just like it's just like a mixer Okay. this is the what the 2i2 second generation USB 2 third generation I believe is USB 3 or USB C I'm not sure which one it is I've got a 8i18 
Yeah, I've got an 8i18 that I use on my laptop out in the living room. But the main thing is this green band around this fader knob and the red band around this fader knob. So these are the faders. These are your volume control for both these preamps. And that's what these are. Again, you can shove a quarter inch uh, TSR connector in there for like an electric guitar. Depending on which microphone you have. Remember, I said a dynamic will use more gain compared to a condenser. A condenser will pick up more range. A dynamic is your close. And you'll have to use, with a dynamic, you'll have to use, and I'm going to get really close to the microphone here, so you'll have to use a pop filter. This is a small one that connects to this microphone mount up here. But all it is is a screen. This one's metal. It's a metal mesh screen. You can get ones that are uh, material. Oh, my nose itches. Dang. Anyways. Excuse me again. Wow. And I'm not going to edit this video, so the last one I really screwed up. And I was saying everything wrong, but it was 8.30 in the morning. But that's a pop filter. For a dynamic, you will definitely want to use a pop filter and possibly either foam or a dead cat. A dead cat is one of those fuzzy things. Technically referred to as a dead cat. It's a wind filter, actually, is what it is. They're mainly used for outside. The foam will get rid of any close breathing. So with a dynamic mic, you're going to be like two to four inches away from a microphone, a dynamic microphone. Most you're going to be is six. Okay. This one here is about 12 inches away and it's not even directly, it's directly facing me, but I don't have to speak into it because it's pickup gain is like this. Okay. It's a cardioid. It's a hyper cardi card cardioid or yeah, hyper cardioid. Anyways. So it's got a relatively small pickup pattern. It has a tendency, any side, it tends to not pick up in the side in the back. Okay. So it's a narrow band. Cardioid is... Mm, well, I forget what the degrees. I think it's like 90 degrees, 120 degrees is the pickup pattern on a regular cardioid. Anyways, whatever. So, just understand that when you're dealing with a dynamic mic, you're going to be up close. You need a pop filter, at least foam covering the diaphragm to cut down on your breaths. All right? Uh, condenser, it's going to pick up your breaths. Okay? That's where you need to learn breath control and breath management. Oh, man. Allergies. Eek. Anywho. So, with a dynamic microphone, you will have to use this gain knob and push it. I mean, really, really push it. If you're using a condenser, you're probably going to, 3 o'clock is probably going to be your max. I mean, literally your max. If this, so this has three bands to it, green, amber, red. Okay? If you're in the green, you're good. Green is good. You want it high in the green to the point to where you're kind of maybe nudging the amber a little bit. Try and stay under the underneath that, but it's always a possibility. But it will literally go green, and from amber to red is a real short vacation trip. I mean, it's like that, okay? So you want to stay in the green, all right? Now, um... Let's see here. Presonus. Okay, so this these are presonuses. Um, this is what a Studio 24. I've got the big brother to this, the Studio 68, so I've got four preamps in it, just like the 8i18 has four preamps in it. This one has LED level meters. I stay in the green. I try not to get into the yellow. With this microphone where it's at right now, I am in the mid-yellow on OBS, okay, for talking. I am in the mid-yellow. If I'm on Skype and you have the normal Skype settings, I'm going to blow your eardrums out. 
it's going to be exceptionally loud. Okay? Well, it's going to seem loud, relatively speaking. I've only got my gain knob turned up to about the 2 o'clock position on this microphone. And most of my microphones are between the 2 and 3 o'clock position, which is where I have them set for. It's fine for what I do with my audio interface and my audio. Okay? Most people, it's way too much. Okay? With your podcast, I'm going to say it's probably just fine, but we've got a lot to go before that. Okay, so again, stay below the yellow or just barely make the yellow nudge. You putting on adding gain to your microphone, and it all depends on the microphone you have. Not all microphones are built equally, not all interfaces are built equally. If you have a USB 96, which I know Jim and Kat have, because I recommended those, you don't know you're clipping until that little red LED right there goes off. I mean, that's all there is to it. You only have a clip LED. That's just telling you, hey, your audio signal is too hot. It now becomes too loud, and so it distorts. It goes above zero. All right? So we'll go through one more, which is your mixers, which Behringer is an easy one. And Behringer also gives me my two slider, my two fader controls. These are the Xenia. You also have Euphoria's, but whatever. The Euphoria's are more like a audio interface. These are an actual true mixer. As you can tell, this one has a knob. You have your line meters over here, and that's what all these are, is a line meter. Again, you want to stay out of the yellow. You have a clip, which is red, yellow, which means you're getting really close to clipping, and your green, which is zero or 20. You want to be close to the zero, in between the zero and the 20. Trust me. This is your gain knob. If you have an EQ, FX, pan, whatever, you don't want to use them. You honestly do not want to use these because of what we're going to do later. All right. The other style is the slider. Now with the slider, it's the same thing. You're just using a slider. You'll either have the LEDs or you will have a clip light. All right. Again, FX, any of that, if you have any of this on your mixer, please don't use it unless you have to. We only want to be concerned with the input level off of the mixer. That's it. All right? Especially with the way I'm going to show things. Okay? All right. Now, again, on this one, You've got some kosher. Try and stay try and stay around the zero mark on these. They're not really all that intuitive. But I've got ways around that and we'll sh I'll show you. You can adjust this or the other or anything else with what I'm going to show you. And that's the whole idea. All right. Now I'm going to lose my music. Goodbye Roger Hogston. All right, banana Okay, back into here, scroll all the way down, and there's my VB audio, and here comes my banana. Engine is starting in three seconds, music is ending in that time. And bink, there goes my music. You can still hear me because my system is still set to this. My browser gets overridden when I start this. So I can't hear my music now. So here we go. We're all on our own. All right. First things first. This line right here. Everything to the left of this line, if you read it up here, says input. This is all the input section. Okay. Everything to the right of this line is the output section. When you first open this up after it's in, after it installs, all of these, the A1 and B1s, wow, what a delay. Okay, all the A1s and B1s will be turned on. Okay? 
This is announce. You announce one, announce two, announce three. Broadcast one, broadcast two. If you don't want to hear yourself, unclick this A1. All right. So that's hardware input one. Excuse me. Unclick the A1. So th this is basically a virtual mixer. That's all this is. A virtual mixer. It is the mix board. The Behringer mix board that you saw, this is it. But in virtual form. These are your sliding faders. The this is your this is your mix, your volume uh, meter right here. Uh, this is your volume meter. This is what's going out. Okay. This is what's coming in. This is what you are coming in. Oh, look at that. Negative nine. Negative one point one nine. One point nine. Wow. Okay. So this is what you are coming in. This is what you are going out. I'm going out at negative, eh, depending on how loud I get, negative 10. And I can make it all the way up to negative 9, negative 6, neg depending on where I am to this microphone. And depending on how loud I'm talking, depends on how loud that gets. All right. When you first open this up, this will be blinking red. Okay. If you look at what I've got it set at, that's my hardware configuration. My basic default hardware configuration. My out is my main out 1-2 Studio 6-8. The same as what is in Windows if I pull it back up again. You take A1 and you make it main out 1-2 Studio 6-8 or whatever your default out is. Okay? If it is the main audio on your computer which is if you have a sound card that is attached to your computer, part of the motherboard makeup, that's what it is, okay? So you have two choices. You can do WDM, which is the Windows uh, default media, I think is what it is. And then you have the MME. MME was the only thing that Google Hangouts would handle with this because it balanced it out. The... The bit rate of Google Hangouts was all over the place. MME kind of stabilized that. If you are pre-recording or going live, you can use WDM. It doesn't matter. Or you can use MME. Doesn't matter. Either way, they're both they both work. Choose one though. Either choose WDM or choose MME. But choose what is appropriate for your system. So you got the main out 1, 2, Studio 6, 8, MME, which is my default. Or you've got the WDM, main out 1, 2, Studio 6, 8, which again is my Windows default. I chose the WDM. On your hardware input 1, which is your microphone, USB microphone, interface, uh, mix board, USB mix board, it's the same thing. Make it a WMD, WDM. Whatever the hardware output is, whatever you choose, MME or WDM, you want the same on the input. One is your mic, one is your speakers, your headphones. If you're, if you're using the headphones with a boom, make them the same, okay? If it's a Logitech, it's a Logitech. If it's a PreSonus, it's a PreSonus. If it's a Focusrite, it's a Focusrite. Make them the same. Either WDM or MME in whatever your system defaults are. Okay? I went with WDM. It works. Okay, so I've got this on mono. One thing to keep in mind. One mouth, mono, two ears, stereo. If you make it mono, it's fine. If you make it stereo, it's fine. Really makes no difference. So this is you broadcasting to B1 in the output section. Okay? You can see the level meters rise and fall exactly the same. 
If I take it off a of stereo, only one of these will do it and the drop off is the same. This mirrors that at the moment. This will always mirror that. Okay? Put it back on mono because I'm using one hole. Anyways. Skype. Let's do Skype, shall we? Because Skype is an easy one. A lot of people don't think that it is, but it really is. Oh, hey, wrong one. I wanted the Skype over here, not the OBX. All right, Skype. Settings. I use the Skype program. I do not use the Skype uh, app. The app is a... A little bit confusing you can use it but it's a little bit more confusing than the actual program both of them have been kind of ho since microsoft took over skype but it is what it is i'm not knocking microsoft i'm just knocking microsoft anywho as you can see my microphone my microphone is default communication device which is actually the main one main instrument line in one, two, studio six, eight. That's it. If I chose this one, it's the same as choosing that one. It's the default. So I'm talking to my guest on a podcast via Skype because 95 to 99.5% of you are going to use Skype for your podcast for communicating with your guest. So being as that's the case, my microphone stays the same. Okay. But to hear the guest in banana we need to use the aux input this is where the aux input comes in play this is why i was so on it about keeping the the standard vaio and the aux separate from each other okay we're going to use the aux input now for skype okay now I will show you how this works, and it drives me absolutely batty because this is the third time I've done it making these videos. So here's my banana. Here's VB audio banana, right? There's my test audio. Now I hear it ringing. Oh, crap. I hate when I do that. If you look... That right there is the test ring. It is coming through the voice meter aux, okay? It is being announced to A1, which is me, and it is going out to B1, which is everybody, your, everybody that's listening to your podcast, okay? That drives me up a wall. I should find something a lot nicer, shouldn't I? I really should. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to go default. Thank you. Have a nice day. That's Skype. Okay, so. That's why the VAIO, when you choose the VAIO, now all your computer sounds go through the first virtual input. So there are five inputs. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you actually have the ability to use an FX in this. Okay, low, high, has an echo section, voice, control panel. You don't have to worry about any of this. Unless you really want to tweak with something, you don't have to worry about it. All your computer audio will go through the fourth virtual input, or which is number one virtual input right here. Skype will go through your aux input. And it will be announced to you and broadcast out to B1, which is your audience. Okay? Live or pre-recorded. Okay? So, that takes care of this section. Now, let's go in a little bit in depth so nobody gets lost. Now, since I use... 
all of the, oh, most of our interfaces, our audio interfaces, our USB mix boards, use an, in including your USB microphones, use an ASIO driver, okay? Banana is no different. It is an AI, ASIO driver that it uses. Now, on mine, mine is preset for my PreSonus Studio 6A8. It is preset to 44.1 kilohertz or 44,100 hertz. It has a block size of 128. I could go one, I could go 64, but 128 suits my purpose without overdriving and without any hiccups. Uh, the loop back is a totally different function, which you don't need to know about unless you're using a camera and you're trying to get your DAW to work. Digital Audio Workstation. Audacity. Adobe Audition. PreSonus Studio One. Ocean Audio. Uh, Reaper. Yada, yada, yada. All right. That's a preset. When I install Banana, it automatically, if we go into the menu and we open up System Settings and Options, it automatically sets it for 44.1 hertz. Or 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. My default buffer was 512, which why is why if I hit my A1, it's called latency. So when I talk, by the time I talk and then it hits my ears, there's a difference in time. Latency. I would have to lower that buffer size to make that latency come closer to almost real time. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to listen to myself on this. Depending on your system, you might hear popping and cracking. You might get digitized. There might be fade out all over the place. If that is the case, then you need to increase this number and go by 12s. See how this is 512? Okay, well, let's think about it. 128 and 128 is 254. 254 and 254 is 512. All right. So do it in increments of 12 or doubling this number. So 512 and 512 equals 1024. Okay. But you can make it 724. I don't care. Do it in increments of 12. Get it to where it stops popping and cracking. Get it to where it stops digitizing. Get it to where um, you stop having fade out. Whatever the case may be, that's what you need to do, okay? You need to increase the buffer size here, depending on if you're using MME or depending on if you're using WDM. I don't use KS. This buffering ASI, ASIO, leave it as is, okay? But that's what you need to do. On those three, fading in and out, Fading in and out, digitizing, or a lot of popping and cracking, okay? Increase the buffer size. It's not going to hurt you if you're not listening to it because you don't have to worry about the latency, all right? This virtual v, uh, ASIO type, leave it as float32. Uh, main sample rate, you definitely want that to be 44,100 hertz. Or 44.1 kilohertz, same number, same, same, same number. Leave those as is, okay? Or make them that, whichever the case may be. A1 out main, 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz. And a buffer size of whatever it needs to be to stop breaking up, popping and cracking, or digitizing. Okay? Whatever that needs to be. And in the next video, you may need to adjust these because we're bringing another piece of software in. This is only video one, but we're going to bring in another piece of software, which is what these are going, how these are going to come in play. All right. Now, if all you wanted to do, if you're just, if you just need this as an interface between Skype, your microphone and whatever you, you, you can use this to record. 
It's got a tape player. You can use this to record. Watch this. You come down here to your tape recorder. It'll be here. Okay? Put it here. Post faders. Post meaning after these faders. Bus A1, you're just going to record yourself. Bus A2, you're not going to record anything. Bus A3, you're not going to record anything because you got nothing on them. Bus B1, which is what you're broadcasting to, is what you need to be on to capture both you and your guest and any bumper music or anything else. Okay? Wave file type, this will be BWF, I think is what the default is. Change it to wave. Wave is a big file, but if you have any editing and post production work to do when you're just doing a pre record, you want wave. Sample rate again 44,100 hertz or same number 44.1 kilohertz. Bit rate lit resolution you definitely want as 24. You can change it to 16 later on, but if you're doing any post production work, do it 24 or do it 32. You can't. It doesn't have a 32 option. Do it 24. Uh, channels, 1, 2. I don't care. I left it 2. It still works the same. Okay? And then, if you make yourself a file on your desktop, you can change where it records to. And then you can rename it later on, after you mess with it, before you mess with it, whatever. Whatever you decide to do, whatever post-production work you've got to do, editing or whatnot, you can put it there, and then you can upload it to the web, an external hard drive, doesn't matter. But at least you know where it's going. My suggestion is if you have a podcast going on, take your, when you get this all set up, save it. Save it in that file. Put a file on your desktop someplace Name it your podcast name. Put several subfolders in there. One of them, call it banana, and you can save everything. The other one, call it recordings, and you can save the recording if you want to use this to record it, okay? There are other ways to do it, but this is just one way to do it, and it records really well. So if you were just doing pre-recorded, you could do this, but there's something, a piece of magic I'm going to show you. Now, I know a lot of you will use Audacity. So, if you need to know what your Skype, remember Skype, this is computer audio. Remember that. That's computer audio. So, if I pulled up, this is Cats. This is her intro that I redid. If I pulled this up and I played it, which it won't play because I've got the audio using some going someplace else. If this played, it would come in on this on this line, okay. Any Windows notification sounds, Skype or other no no Skype will go over here, but any Windows notifications, the asterisk signs, all that crap. If you've got any messenger notifications coming in on your computer and you have not taken removed your computer notifications, they will come in on this line now, okay? You can mute this line. You can mute this. You can mute this. The problem with the mute is, is you're not, your Skype guest will hear it. You will hear it, but it will not broadcast out as you notice the faders are dead. This one is still active. This one is still active for Skype. This is still active. The only place it's not active is the broadcast. If you mute yourself and while your guest is talking and you mute your computer sounds and you're back here holding a conversation, your guest is going to hear it because it doesn't mute you from the guest. Just like if you have the guest muted, you're still going to hear them. The only people that's not is your audience. Okay? It's the only drawback. I just recently discovered that because I was messing around with it one day. Anywho, so all of your computer audio will come here. So if you've got bumper music, if you've got an intro, an outro, it'll come through there. 
and it doesn't matter what you use. You can use Groove Music. You can use Windows Media Player. Doesn't matter. It'll come through there because that is now your computer's outline. That's now what your computer comes through when you use the voice meter VAIO. Okay? That's why I said you want to remember what your defaults are so you can change it back. If this is closed, nothing's ever heard through it. And if you still if you close this and you still have your system set for banana, you won't hear anything if this if this program is closed. If you have banana, if you have voice meter as your default in and out, you have to have this program up and running to hear anything. FYI. All right. Audacity. Now we're going to balance out Skype and you to where, and this is a hard thing to do because you never know what it's going to be. I'm going to use Audacity. Okay. My first choice is my first voice meter choice as an input. Okay. My second choice is going to be my last voice meter choice. Okay. And stereo mono. Up to you. I leave that up to you. But watch this. Okay, so I'm recording now, and Audacity is seeing it, right? Audacity is seeing what I am saying. And I don't even have my Windows Audio default banana. It's default my Studio 6.8. It's doing it because I'm getting the input from my Studio 6.8 and the output via my Studio 6.8 because those are my defaults. Even if I change my Windows defaults to Banana, it's still going to be the same. But right now, I just have it listening to Banana. But if you look, this is your meter. Okay? This meter is your meter. Right now, I'm going to say... This is recording me at about, I'm going to say negative 20 to 22 dB. And I can prove that. But I'm going to say right now, this is what it's recording me at. Negative 20 to 22 dB, right? So let's find out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to export it as a wave. Always export as a wave. I'm going to set it to my file, Tinker. I'm going to set it as a 24-bit, and I'm going to save it as whatever the hell, because I don't care what it's named. I'm going to pull up one of my favorite programs. That will tell me, and you can do this with Audacity, too. There is an audiobook um, plug-in for Audacity. I forget what it's called, but they just recently came out with it during the latest release of Audacity. So you can do it, and it will give you all these stats. Okay, you can do it in a Justin, Justin, I already showed you how to do it with Adobe Audition, right? You can do it in Ocean Audio. You can do it in Reaper. You can do it. Yeah, so long as it's open as a project in Studio One, you can see all this. All right, so da, 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 there's my untitled. I'm just going to not drag every single frigging file into it because I don't need to. All right, there it goes. 24. It was actually lower than what I thought. Okay? Negative 24. That's way lower. What we're looking for, what we're going to try and get out of this, and you look, this is really, my noise floor is just really toast in here. I've got a bunch of fans out there because inside this booth it gets really hot. And I exchanged the air and I just left the fans running because it's a video. Anyways, you're not going to be hearing this audio at all. So this audio comes up really dirty, but I'm recording shouldn't. But I have a true peak of 3.20. This needs to be at least negative 0.50 at a minimum. Okay. For the simple fact, at a minimum, you're not clipping. It can be negative 0.3, negative 0.2, negative 0.1. Don't care. So long as it isn't above 0.00. .00 you won't clip. See? Zero clipping. This noise floor here, it's fine for what it is right now. Negative 61. 
if you can get it between negative 61 and there's some tricks around there that I can show you how to do and I will eventually negative 61 to negative 68 hey that's fine but this is extremely this is low could I bring this up absolutely post processing I can do anything almost anything <coughs> but ideally you want to get close to your margin as possible now for broadcasting for a podcast like this I'm going to say negative 17 to negative 18. this total RMS is the to total overall volume that will include music that will include bumper music it will include your intros and outros it will include your conversation with your guest all right this was just me now let me close that get rid of that shrink that down let's go ahead and close this I'm not going to save it nope so We'll start recording again, and I'll show you how you're going to control you and your guest. So all I got to do, all I got to do, left mouse click and hold. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Left mouse click and hold and bring it up. Let go. So I just brought it up, and that's where I'm at right now. Okay, I'm going to say it's probably maybe a little too loud. I think I probably need to be around six or so. Actually, no, if I'm not screaming, it's fine. But so if I'm just talking, right, if I'm just being myself on this and we'll see, I'm going to end up being just above negative six, but I don't want to go any higher than zero. A little bit is fine, but you'll end up destroying audio when you scream. All right, right there's right there is a clip okay now once you gain yours which I'm going to if you right click in here you can choose so I'm going to put this at 5.5 and that's where I'm going to keep it for right now all right that gets me right around six almost every time and unless I'm really yelling into the microphone I'm never going to clip I'll come close but I will never clip all right so that's how I balance out my level. Close, no. Now, same premise. When you're recording, same premise before you get on air with your guest, you get them on Skype, all right? You get them on Skype. This is your Skype line. This is your Skype fader. Balance them out, have them talk. You want them coming in roughly at the same level you're coming in. Remember, your guests are going to talk on laptop microphones. They're going to talk on their phone microphones. They're going to have earbud mic with microphones either through their laptop or through their phones. Most of them are not going to have a professional setup. If they do, you can balance it out right here. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to stop talking, let them talk, Remember where your levels are at, which is going to be right around negative 6 to negative 12, a little bit over, a little bit under, no big deal. But you want them in the same ballpark. Okay? And you use this fader to do it. Pretty simple, huh? If you need to reset these faders, left click, double. Double left click automatically re zeros them. All right? Now, Let's see how close I actually was to being close to negative 17 dB. So how close was I, he says. He does not know. Let him find out. Negative 21. I could still go up some. But the problem is I already clipped 16 times. Okay, you only want to use this for pre-recording because pre-recorded podcasts, you can go back in, you can do a lot of tweaking to them, you can bring that up, you can bring this down. So it's perfectly fine to have this level meter not go above negative six and usually in between negative 16, I mean negative 18 and negative six is the perfect place. You do not want to use this for live straight off the bat. You do not want to use just banana. It will cream you. 
okay? But yeah, between negative 18 and negative 6, and you want your Skype guest to be the same. That way you've got plenty of fiddle room, you got plenty of headroom. That's what they call it, headroom. You got plenty of headroom after the fact to do whatever you need to do post production, okay? But that's basically the ins and outs of banana, all right? Not too not too shabby, but that's that's the ins that's the ins and outs. No. So that's banana. Now, we're going to get into banana again after on this next one. The next one, when I first recorded it, was two hours long. This one, I'm not sure how long it is right now, but I'm going to try and keep it under two hours with the next program and everything we need to do. All right? So until then, which will be here in just a little bit, I just got to exchange the air in the booth. I'll get to recording this again and see if I can get this one loaded on YouTube or loading on YouTube. So, okay, until then, I will see you in just a minute.